Hello there and welcome to uh, my channel. Today I thought I'd take a look at um, Stable Diffusion um, AI software. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I'm uh, by no means an expert, but I uh, thought I'd show you what I'm doing. And if you are like me, a newbie to this, you, hopefully you might find something useful. So what I thought I'd do is I'll go over creating images um, from prompts. So we'll be using the text to image tab that you can see there. We'll uh, generate some images and then we will use the image to image to um, ge generate images from an image. We'll also take a quick look at styles and how I use styles um, to build my prompts. And um, we'll take also a look at um, the website um, Prompt Hero, which we can use to um, get some useful prompts to uh, generate images. So um, without further ado, let's uh, take a look at um, text to image. Okay, so just a quick run through the text to imaging page. Um, we'll start off at the top of the page. We've got the um, model that we're going to use. The models are also called checkpoints, same thing. Um, so for this demo, I'm going to stick to using Realistic Vision 2.0. Coming down here into this box, we enter the um, text or the prompts that um, you want to use to generate your image, whether or not that's a, a dog sitting under a tree in a park with his favourite toy or man running along a mountain road in the snow, whatever. Um, that's where your prompts go. Below that are negative prompts. And that's where you can include anything that you don't want to appear in your image. So if you generate an image and you find that something's in, appearing in it that you don't want, you can add it to the negative prompt and try running it again. Um, but we'll look at some negative prompts in, in a second as well. Below that are the um, basic config settings. And we'll look at those in a moment. I'm going to stick to the default values wherever I can. A couple of ones I'll have to change slightly. And um, we'll also take a quick look at the styles well, once we've got some prompts. And uh, there we go. So let's now find some prompts to use to generate our first image in text to imaging. So we're going to go to um, the Prompt Hero website. Um, so let's do that now. OK, so we're on the Prompt Hero website. Um, if you want to use this, you do have to uh, register and set up an account with it. It literally is just your email address and nothing more than that. Um, but you do need to, to do that to, to use this um, website. So I've gone, I'll put the um, URL in the comments to um, my video. But we've gone to Prompt Hero and I've gone to the Realistic Vision Prompts page. And if we scroll down from here, you're going to see a bunch of images that have been um, supplied by subscribers who have created images using um, realistic vision. And I thought what we'll do is we'll take a look at one of them and we'll try and generate something similar from one of these images. So uh, let's try, let's have a look at this one. So Angelina Jolie dressed as Laura Croft. So if I just click in here, that takes us into the main page. And what we've got here is the prompts that we need to use. We've got the negative prompts applied as well. And some down here, some of the basic settings um, that we can apply in Stable Diffusion to try and create something similar. Not exactly the same, but similar. We also have here, we've got a little picture of a plant here, which is um, indicating it's the seed number. So for every image generated in Stable Diffusion, um, the image is, uh, is allocated a seed number. So for this image that we see here that was generated in Realistic Vision 1.3, it was given this seed number. And we can try and use that and see it'll help us to get something quite close to that. So the important thing is that we are using um, the correct model which is realistic vision. Um, we'll copy whatever configs that we need to. And um, 
let's give that a go. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut and paste the, first of all, the positive prompts in back across to my stable diffusion. Going to paste that in there. Okay. Come back. Let's get the negative prompts. Put those in. Okay, and then we'll just have a quick look at the rest of the settings. So at the top there, as we saw, we're in realistic vision 2.0. So mine's a slightly later uh, version, but we should still get something um, quite usable. Looking at the rest of the config, um, sampling steps, the default is 20. The um, guide suggested 50 steps. So let's Let's copy that. Let's wrap that up to 50 steps. Um, the default size of all images created in default and uh, diffusion is initially it's um, 512 by 512. And so that's going to give us a square image. I want a portrait shaped image. So I'm going to change the 512 to 768. And that should give us a portrait sized image. Um, 5112 is fine for the width. Batch count is how many images do we want to generate? And um, it can be any number you like. I'm going to do four. So we, we're going to get four um, individual images based on this um, description that we've got here. Um, CFC scale, I'm going to leave at default, which is seven. Um, the seed we saw, if uh, with seed, if we leave it on zero one, it will generate a random image. Um, but we have, if we go back to the image, we saw that we've got a seed, um, which is relevant to this specific image. Now we won't get exactly the same image by putting that in, but if I put that seed in here, that will give us a closer image to uh, what we're trying to achieve and everything else i think should be the same let's i don't want to restore faces i don't think at this time so we've got let's just have a very quick look at the positive prompts that we've got um it's angelina jolie dressed as laura croft and then a, a bunch of descriptive words to be used in the image that it wants to that we want it to generate um 8k high highly detailed full length frame yada 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 so um let's give that a go before i do that though let's just quickly look at um styles now styles what that does that that allows us to um, save the information that we've put into the prompts, both the positive prompts and the negative prompts. Um, so in this case, if I wanted to come back at a later date and, and reuse these, these details for this Angelina Jolie image, let me just copy that, save me typing it. Um, what I can do is I can save that as a style so, and then recall that at will. So if I um click on save style it's going to ask for a name so i'm going to put in angelina julie there and save that now we've now got that saved as a style so if i was to um come back to this on another day and i want to um call up these details again let me just clear this prompts out of the way so we've lost the information that i've just put in but hey we can go to the style and hopefully we've got a style there called angelina jolie yes we have and now that we've got that i can now paste that back into the boxes and there we are so i can call that up at will very useful tool um, i'm using these quite a lot and you can add more and more styles to to your prompts you don't it's not just one um, style per prompt you can you can build small styles and increase your prompts that way if you want to so just have a quick quick scan over what i'm doing so realistic vision 
we've used in defaults where we can. The sampling method is Euler A, which is a standard default one. You see here, there are lots of sampling methods. And with time, if you're new to this like myself, you might find that um, other sampling methods are preferable, but um, I'm sticking with Euler A. Um, we're going to generate four images. It's going to be a portrait um, shaped image. We're using the seed from um, the, the picture that we saw. And let's now try and um, generate an image. Well, four images, in fact. OK, so it's finished uh, generating the four images. You'll notice there's a fifth one there. So any time you generate more than one image, you'll get what's called a grid. And if I um, left click on the grid here and then left click again, we'll get a larger size of it. OK, and so we've got four images plus the grid image. And now if we scroll through those images, let's have a look and see which one we like the best. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we've got four images there um, based on that seed of that image. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll transfer one of these across to um, image to image. So I'm just gonna close down this bit here. And I'm just going to make sure we get the right one. So I'm going to select this, this image here. Um, yeah, I think that one. Is the best. Now, as you, as you flip through these images, um, the details, you'll see the prompt details below it, but what will change is the seed number. So um, if you look down here, seed number 665, the one I want is 666. So um, if we wanted to use that seed number again, that's the number to take. Just make sure that you are clicked on the right image if you want to take a seed number. So what we can do is now we've got one image that we think we like. We want to work on that one. We can send that across to um, image to image simply by clicking on send to image to image. And there we go. So you see now we're now in the next tab, which is image to image. The prompts and negative prompts have all come across. And if we look down at the seed number 63, uh, let's double check that. Um, relates to where we were, 6-3, just want to double check that, 6-6. Six, six. So what I want to do is copy that, put that back to image to image, change the seed number now to what we are now working on. And let's try generate a few more pictures and see if we get anything that's uh, better than this one. Um, and one thing to notice when you come from image to image to, uh, sorry, from text to image to image to image, you get an extra config line. And what we've got now is denoising strength. So if I go back up to text to image, oops, sorry, excuse me, clumsy fingers. If we go back to text to image, we've got one um, config here called the CFG scale. Now what that does, that impacts how much the AI listens to the prompts that you've, you've got here. Um, so you can turn that up or down to taste, but it's worth um, sticking with these on the default to begin with and seeing how you get on. But when you come across to image to image, you'll see that there's an extra config, which is denoise strength. And basically that's kind of like the CFG scale. So the CFG scale looks at the prompts, but the denoise strength looks at the image. And again, it's a scale of how much you, you want it to more or less look like the image. So again, you, you've got some flexibility there. 
So just be aware that, that the noise strength applies to the photo, hence you only see it in image to image. You do not see it in text to image because there is no image there to look at. Okay, so we've got our base image. We've put in the, the seed number. Um, you'll notice that the batch count has come back down to one. I'm going to put that back up to four to get four sample images and the sampling set steps are still at 50. Everything else should have pretty much stayed the same. It's just the batch count resets itself to um, one and the seed number will likely be what it was previously. So I had to change that. So we're good to go. So let's now just try and generate another image, another four images from this one that we've chosen. Okay, so we've got our four images plus our grid image generated in um, image to image. So let's just have a, first of all, let's have a quick look at the uh, grid, left click on that and then left click again. Okay, and then let's just quickly scroll through those four images. Oops, what did I do wrong there? Gammy eye up there, so that didn't work. Not perfect by any means. Notice how the background changes so much um, in these images. Okay, so we've generated images through text to image, we've Im uh, generated images through image to image. And got some results. Let's just try just to finish off on. Um, I'm going to use image to image, but I'm going to take away this image and I'm going to put in something random, completely random, and we're going to take away the um, seed number in a minute. So let me just add. Um, ten, let, me, let me choose that. So, a picture of yours truly with an image to image with a description for the Angelina image. Um, so, and if we come down here, let's get rid of this seed because it relates to a specific picture. Um, but if I press here, that will just put it back to the minus one, which means it will um, generate random images. And we're still at the batch count of four. And let's see what that does. So basically what the IAA is being asked to do now is work on this uh, prompt for the Angelina Jolie pictures, um, but based on an image of something completely different. Um, and let's see, let's see what that does. Just out of curiosity to, uh, to finish off them. I'll just check the rest of the settings are still the same. So seed minus one, um, the size is the same. Got my batch count, steps 50. Yeah, everything else seems to be the same. Happy with that. So let's generate that. And then we'll come back to that in a moment when we've got our four images and see how much does it pick up from the image that I've now input, or is it only going to look at the prompt let's uh, let's see what that does so let's come back in a moment okay so we've generated four more images plus our grid image um using the previous prompts but this time we've added a picture of myself into the mix and um let's take a, a look side by side of of the difference that we've got there by doing that so if we move across to the first image I'll just leave them side by side here in a moment. So notice here that it's fulfilling the brief from the prompt um, pretty much, but it's now trying to take the pose that it's seeing, or to my eyes anyway, this is how I'm interpreting. It's looking at the pose of the image of me. You know, we've got the right shoulder forward, um, half a body shot, not, not full length, we're not three quarter length as the others were. The, background is more muted so it it is taking uh, as much as it can from the image um, 
whilst taking out more so from the uh, written prompt. And if we go along to the next one, same thing, right shoulder forward. It's more in a portrait stance, the muted dark brownish background, very similar again, um, quite, a, quite different to the original images that, that we were getting. Um, let's go one more, same thing. Um, same pose prompt really, um, just, just generated a different version of it. So yeah, so it is picking up the essence of the picture as well, as best it can. And you come along to the fourth image and it just gave up the ghost on that. And because this is a random thing, you expect that anyway, to get three images that were what I was hoping for is, is pretty good. Um, so yeah, so there you go. So let's go, let's have a look at that. So yeah, pleased with that. Um, there are better ways of adjusting your image than, than doing what I just did there, but it is particularly when you're learning, it's, um, it's a useful, uh, not trick, but a way of trying to influence the images you, you're getting if you want. So yeah, I, I find that quite interesting. So yeah, so just to recap, we looked at um, generating images in um, Stable Diffusion using prompts under text to image. We then chose an image from that, transferred it across to image to image and generated some more images. We then took away the generated image and added in the picture of myself and run the same test again to see what we would get and we saw that the pose changed on three out of four of the the images that it, that it produced so that was interesting and we also took a quick look at how to create styles so um yeah so i hope you found this useful and uh, thank you for your time thank you and goodbye